welcome to Sanctuary Cyber Sunday. I'm going to say that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We want to uh, directly give our attention to, to the Word of God, and we want to speak into the urgency of the moment that we're experiencing right now. There is a Word of the Lord that's found in the Bible that can comfort us and also give us direction as to how we need to respond and what we need to do and how our attitudes need to shift from where we've been before the coronavirus to where we'll be after the virus is gone. But right now, it's time for the shift. So with that in mind, we're going to ask if you would turn with us to Second Chronicles chapter 6, and then we want to open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We just ask, God, that you fill us with your spirit, that you speak to our hearts. We pray, Lord, that your word will comfort, that it will edify, and that it would exhort us, O oh God, in the times that we are in. God, we need you, and we pray for a blessing, O oh God, over those that are leading us and those that are involved in responding. And God, we pray that you'll give us a word to encourage us for the church in these times. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 6, there is a, a very uh, strong word that comes from Solomon. And what Solomon is doing, Solomon is actually in a period of restoration. The nations have fallen away from God and the word of God had been taken away from the temple and people were not really going to the temple and worshiping God. They had fallen and began to worship idols and things of that nature. So what God did is God had promised David that he was going to let David build him a house, that his name might be able to be restored. But David was a man who was a man of war. He had a lot of blood on his hands. He had done some things that weren't really pleasing in God's sight. So God told him he could not build him a house. So in the midst of it all, we find ourselves in, uh, in, in a, a prayer, a moment where Solomon is finished building the temple and then finishing building the temple. Solomon gets to a place where now it's time to shift the people's focus from the things that they thought were important in terms of the physical structure of the temple and the tabernacle to shifting everyone's heart from the tabernacle to God. And in shifting their attention from the tabernacle to God, what he does, Solomon gives some very strong words, and we just want to glance over it just a little bit to be able to give us a foundation in the context of the verses and the scriptures that will guide us today. The Bible says, then said Solomon, the Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. There are dark times that we're living in, but God is in the midst of it. God is not invisible. God is, some people say, where is God right now? Oh, God is in the thick of this. God is moving in it. But what God has done, God has shifted everything to make it so God could, God has a purpose in it. He wants to build a house. God's house is not really brick and mortar. God wants to have a house that is not built with hands. A habitation where people will be able to recognize wherever the Lord is, that should be a habitation for the Lord. He should feel comfortable dwelling in the land that he lives in, a place where he can dwell there forever. And the Bible says that when Solomon finished building the house, he turned his face toward the people and he began to bless the congregation. We want to bless everybody right now and tell you that you are blessed. You're the head and not the tail and God is with us. And if God be for us, who could be against us? We want to bless the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. And we want to bless you. We want to tell you you're blessed and God is moving in by his spirit and he, and he that keepeth Israel and he's keeping you. He'll never slump, neither slumber nor sleep. And what he did, he said, he talked to the people and he said, he told them, he blessed them. Then he said, blessed be the Lord God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But here it is in this verse, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. So what Solomon did, he shifted the people's focus to God. He acknowledged God, and in that acknowledgement, he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who with his hands fulfilled that which he spake. Whatever God promises, he's going to do it. He that begun a good work in you, he's going to perform it. And the Bible says God made a promise to David, but in this day, Solomon saying God did what he promised to do. In verses 5 and 6 of chapter 6 in 2 Chronicles, it says, Since the day that I brought forth my people. This is God talking. God brought them out of Egypt. He said, I brought forth my people out of Egypt. I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel 
to build a house in, that my name might be there. God wants his name to be in the midst of the people because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and are safe. There's no one. God said, I didn't choose no man to be ruler over my people. Whoever rules over God's people, let's be, be, be clear with each other. Whoever is ruling over the people, God is the one that chooses rulers. God is the one who chooses kings. God is the one who chooses the rulers to be over his people. But God is the one who wants the, the, the ruler to realize that God needs to be over the ruler. God is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So our sermon title for today is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. Now, it was in the heart of David to build the house, but nonetheless, David could not build it. So when we get to, chat, when we get to verse 10, it begins to uh, give us some more uh, detailed direction. The Lord, therefore, has performed his word that he spoke, and he rose up that room. And the Lord promised, key words, the Lord promised and he did what he promised, said what he did. But in verse 11, we see where not only does God want a house, but God wants to have his presence recognized wherever he reigns and rules. So it's important for us to realize that God wants us to realize that he is the Lord and that he's worthy of worship, he's worthy of honor, and he's worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, God, I put my presence there, I put my ark there so that people will know where I'm at. And they would know that I'm a present help in the time of trouble. And I know then they trust me. But I've got to make it so you realize, you've got to recognize my presence. God is not gone. God is right here. He's right there in the midst of everything that's going on. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, first of all, there might not be anybody that's able to seem like they got an answer for the coronavirus. But one thing's for sure, the Bible says, O Lord God, Solomon said, there is no God like thee in the heaven nor the earth. That's right there where we could get a praise. We could give God some honor and tell God that in the midst of it all, I shall not fear. There's no God like you. And you're able, you're able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that's working in us. But in the midst of that too, God keeps his covenant. God is not slack concerning his promises. All the promises of God are yea and amen. And not only that, but in the midst of it, Everybody is beginning to show signs, or not everybody, but there are people that are showing signs of concern and people that are showing signs of fear. And we're wondering whether we're going to survive or whether we're going to make it. But God is a God who shows mercy. And we need to cry out for God to be merciful unto us and for God to be merciful unto us. And that, he, and that in the midst of us asking God for mercy, God wants something in exchange. He wants us to walk before him with all of our hearts. Amen. So the issues that are going on, they're not to make people sick. They're making it so it can turn our hearts to be able to walk before mm -hmm. the Lord and recognize him and do the things that God says. Mm -hmm. That we need to honor his word. The Bible says that we should look at this law of the Lord. We shouldn't turn from it to the left or to the right. But we should be careful to observe, to do all that's in the word of God. The Bible is God's instruction before leaving earth. But it gives us a, a, a manual for how to live in a way that pleases God. Amen? So, as we continue, what we want to do is, we want to shift a, 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 a verse in the New Testament. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 15, in the King James Version, it says, which in his times, Paul is speaking, which in his time he shall show, and God is showing right now, who is the blessed and the only potentate, the king of kings, and the Lord of Lords, God is showed, God has showed up and God is showing everybody that he is the Lord. God is doing this to shake the nations. God is speaking. Sometimes God speaks in a soft voice, but there are other times when we, we don't hear God and we do what we do, but God has a way of making it so we can see when God is screaming. America, the world, all those that are viewing, God is screaming right now. He's screaming and he's saying, I'm the only potentate. Well, what's a potentate? A potentate is a monarch or a ruler, an emperor, an overlord, a leader. God is saying, I'm the only monarch around here. I'm the only one who rules the heaven and the earth. I'm the emperor. There's none above me and there's nobody that can do or be able to exalt themselves above the name of the Lord. 
God says, I am ruling and I'm the overlord. And God's making all rulers realize in a humble way that without God, there's no answer for and no remedy for what we're facing. It says in verse 10, but. In verse 18, it says, but. That means on the contrary, the question is, but will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Well, God can and he wants to, but the heaven and the heaven of heavens can't contain God. God is too big and the earth is not too big where God can't control what he's created. But God can't just dwell here, but God chooses to dwell among, among us. And as God chooses to dwell among us, there's a, uh, uh, there is something that, that comes out of the verse and it's in verse 19 in the chapter, verse 19 through 21. And it says, Solomon goes into what we need to do right now. The first thing we need to do is we need to go into intercession. So the intercession. Here's how Solomon says it. He says, have, have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord, my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayed before thee, that thy eyes might be open unto this house day and night. Watch over us day and night upon the place whereof thou hast said that you put your name there. Well, God, you promised us that you put your name there and we exalt in the name of the Lord. So God, we're coming to make an inter to intercede for the nations as the people of God, that you would remember, oh God, and that your eyes, that you would see what's going on. And then we ask, oh Father, that you would hearken, that you would attend to, that you move swiftly to the prayer, which your servants praying this day towards this place, towards this country, towards the world, towards this situation. The servants of God are praying. And we're asking you, Father, we should be praying without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Hearken, therefore, unto the supplications. Did that word again, twice in three verses. Supplications mm -hmm. of thy servant and of thy people, of thy people, which they make towards this place. God, we're asking, hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and God, we're asking for you to deliver us from the coronavirus, but there's a first thing first moment here. There's something that's even more important than healing us from the coronavirus. God, we ask that you forgive us. And God, we come, God, to ask that you forgive us, oh God, from turning our faces on you, for acting like as if you do not reign and you're not ruling, that you're not God. We've been God over ourselves. And God, we come first to ask you to hear and forgive. Mm -hmm. And as we ask God to hear and forgive, two times the word supplication was mentioned. Well, the definition of the word supplication, listen, the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. See, God is not going to allow things to turn around until he begins to experience a sense of humility over the land. Mm -hmm. See, people came out, they were saying things in arrogance. It's not this, it's not that. They were minimizing. They were saying things to make it so it wasn't, as, it didn't seem like it was as big as this has turned out to be. And now we find that people's dispositions are changing. He's softening hearts. He's making really making people realize, I can't, we can't do this. We can't fix this. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord. Yep. And as we do that, it's a time for supplication. This is the time for supplication. This is the time for supplication. We need to be asking or begging for something earnestly. We need God to move, but we need to reposition ourselves in a posture where we bow down like Solomon was doing this prayer. Solomon was on his hands and he put his face to the ground and began to pray this prayer. Will you humble yourself? Will you bow down your face and ask the Lord to forgive us and to heal the land? The verse says in 2 Chronicles 6, 29 there, there, through 31, these things highlight the moment of the coronavirus. If there be Darth, the scripture says, if there be Darth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting or mildew, locusts are hitting Africa in a way that has never been before. Caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities in the land, whoso, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, 
It sounds like a prayer for the times that we're living in now. Mm -hmm. It says, then what prayer or supplication soever shall be made by of any man, of any man, or of all thy people, Israel, anybody and all your people, when everyone shall know, when everyone shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands towards the Lord, then God we're asking, then we're asking, then hear thou from heaven, O God, hear from your dwelling place, and first forgive us, and then second, render unto every man according to his ways, whose heart, you know the hearts of people, God, for thou only knows the heart of the children of men, that they may fear thee, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding, that we may fear God, to walk in God's ways. So long as they live in the earth, which you gave to our fathers, God is saying, it's a time for supplication. And it's a time when we need to realize that we need to pray for God to move. Then he says, then, then in verses 40 to 42, then hear from heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let, I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and that thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, Thou and the ark of thy strength, let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation and let the saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant forever. God answers prayer. When we get to Second Chronicles chapter seven, God answers. That whole chapter, Solomon is praying. And there are eight supplications in that chapter. We highlighted just one. The one that deals with our coronavirus situation, the pestilence, the locusts, the things that are going on that are, the sickness, the sore, the grief. That's the one supplication out of eight. But God responds to all of them. And he has a response for us today. Anytime we pray, prayer is a conversation. Solomon prayed, and then God answered. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying in verse one of chapter seven of Second Chronicles. When Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Fire represents first judgment. God took his judgment out on the burnt offerings that were there, representing the fact that God had punished the burnt offering, judged the burnt offering instead of judging the people that had sinned against him. God gave his son Jesus as the Lamb of God who was slain for, slain for the sins of the world. And instead of taking out his anger and his wrath on us, God has allowed this virus to come to turn our attention so that we can look to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Because there's salvation in no other name, but at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. And we need a cleansing. There's cleansing in the blood of Jesus. When we ask the Lord to forgive us and to save us, forgive us for our sins, to save us and to come into our lives, the cleansing blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Not only that, but he said, if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin, and then to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And then in that cleansing also, God makes it so he gives a salve, a balm, an ointment to heal the soul's diseases. So in that, when he finished praying, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And when America and the world bows down and prays, and we do like Solomon did, the glory of the Lord will fill the place. 
And the Bible says the priest could not even enter into the house of the Lord. And when the priest couldn't enter into the house of the Lord, the Bible says that the glory of the Lord filled the house. It was so thick in there that nobody could even go into the temple. God's presence wants to fill the world because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. But there's a key verse in here. It says that when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and I don't know about you, but we all seeing some fire coming down in another way right now. We see the fire coming down. When the people saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, God's glory is upon the world. And we see the fire of the Lord coming down. What did they do in response? They bowed themselves with their faces to the ground, America, upon the pavement and worshiped. We need to bow down and bring worship back to America, bring worship back to the world. And they praised the Lord. They began to bless the Lord, despite all that they prayed about and the things that were those supplications that they were asking God to answer prayer for. They shifted from the problem and they began to focus on the one who's the only one who deserves all the honor and the praise. And when they did that, God began to respond. God began to respond and they began to proclaim because God is good in the midst of this virus. Oh, God is good for his mercy endures forever. Everyone is not gonna be consumed by this virus. And one thing's for sure, God promises that he will put a hedge of protection around us and he will keep us from the noisy, noisome pestilence. It says in the king himself, the king himself and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. This is the answer. But the Bible says that, that this is what happened. Not only did God fill the place, the smoke with his presence, but then God spoke and God will speak to the leaders. God spoke and he appeared. The Lord appeared to Solomon by night and he spoke to him. Isn't it good that God is a, a God that we can expect that he's not just up there, but God says his people, his sheep, they hear his voice and God spoke and Solomon heard God speak. God said, I have heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for myself for a house of sacrifice. Verse 13 says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or listen to this, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if, key verse, or if I send pestilence among my people, mm -hmm. This is not something just happening because of something that happened in China. No, 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 no. God is sending this. God is sending this. And God says, if I do that, if I do that, then there's some way that he wants us to respond mm -hmm. to what he sent. God does not want us to just be walking around trying to get hand sanitizer. God wants us to wash our hands as sinners and to cleanse ourselves. And God wants us to humble ourselves. He said, if you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, he'll exalt us in due season. And God gives a very strong, strong, familiar verse that most of us are familiar with. And maybe I can introduce it to some. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, God speaks these words with power and affirmation, a direct instruction, a if-then statement. If we do this, God said, then I'll do that. So what is God waiting for? What does God want the world to do? He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall do what? First, humble themselves. Second, pray. Third, seek my face. Fourth, turn. Turn from what? Turn from their wicked ways. That's another a way of saying repent. When we turn from the sin and we turn to God, the Bible calls that repentance. He says, if you do that, it's so similar to 1 John 1, 9. If you do that, God said, then I will do this. In this verse, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then, if, then, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. And I will 
heal their land. First John says, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you. That's the if of your sins. The then is, and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So as we prepare ourselves, amen, and we thank the Lord for our time together, we want to compel you to encourage each other. If you are someone who has called on the name of the Lord and you can say that you shall not saved and that you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, this is a time to proclaim the name of the Lord. This is a time to begin to, to compel people and to be compassionate and to be kind and to be considerate. And we need to first, we need to get rid of the leaven. We need to get rid of the sin that's in our lives and we need to turn to the Lord. We need to get ourselves, we need to get back on track and line up with the God of the Bible. And as we do that, God tells us, first step in the invitation, we gotta humble yourselves. This is time for not being arrogant and thinking about what you're able to do, but we need to realize that prayer is when we realize we don't know what to do and there's nothing that we can do and God is the only one that we can trust to do it. Seeking God's face is not just the same as saying I believe in God. Seeking God's face is very intimate. It's close, up close, prayer, fasting, time in, in God's word, seeking God's face, asking God for visitation, to visit you, to speak with you, time alone with God. This is a good time for solitude like Jesus to spend time with God in prayer. But then the most important too is to turn. We could do all those things, but if we don't turn and repent and ask God to forgive us. God's not gonna hear us because our sins will separate us from God. So we close with saying, God wants you to do that. He wants you to humble yourself and pray. Ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you for your sins, to come into your life and to save your soul. And then share that with someone else. God said, then I'm a hear from heaven. I will. And I will forgive their sin. I will. And I will hear their land. I will heal the land. So Jesus saves. Will you accept Jesus as Savior and be able to share that salvation message with someone else? The Bible says, if we accept the saving power of God, like in the ark with Noah, the pestilence and the storm, the floods can come, but it won't come near us. We're covered in the blood of Jesus. Let's bow our hearts. Maybe you're here today. You don't know Jesus. You can pray that prayer. You can say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And God, you said that whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I'm calling on your name. Save me from my sins. Come into my life and be Lord of my life. I surrender my life to you right now. If you prayed that prayer, then we just want to let you to ask. You will go to our website. Our website is Sanctuary Baptist, www.sanctuarybaptist.com. And on that website, you'll be able to go right on the website and you can click a link. We have an important update that we've posted that if you go into the Corona update and you click it, there's directions for you to be able to understand how to link with us as we continue with our Bible studies on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And also as we continue with our worship services, our Sanctuary Cyber Sunday worship services, we'll continue to have them at 11 a.m. each week. And the other things that are posted on the website, there will also be a posting on YouTube later on today at about 1, 1.30. The same message will be able to be posted and you'll be able to see the message and send it to other people and view it if you weren't able to see it on Facebook. The other thing we wanted to do is tell you that we are excited and we ask that you will continue to, uh, to give, amen, on the sanctuary, the www.sanctuarybaptist.com website. There's also uh, a link where you can go to giving and even on the Corona update, there is a direct uh, a guide. We have a video tutorial on there, a guide for online giving that you can go on there and you can click right onto YouTube and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions for you to be able to continue with your tithes and your offerings in obedience to God as we continue to sow into the kingdom of God. We wanna thank you for being with us at Sanctuary Cyber Sunday. On behalf of myself, Pastor Anthony Lester and First Lady Joyce Lester, and the members of Sanctuary Baptist Fellowship Church, we want to thank you for coming 
And we want to ask that you would continue to keep us in prayer as we pray for the nation. God bless you and God keep you. Walk with the King today and be a blessing.